Hello, I'm Joseph. Um, I started to work on a deployment plugin for uh, for NeoVim, and specifically right now I'm only going to focus on SFTP, but I want to get other protocols in there like FTP and FTPS, um, just to uh, have that full um, breadth of, of like common protocols to upload with. And the reason why I'm attempting is that while there are other plugins for NeoVim and for Vim it itself, um, the general issue is that they don't keep these connections open. And it, it's very time consuming to wait 10 seconds for a file to upload and then go to your browser and test it. Like that's, it's like almost a no-go on me just for that. And I would be like an emergency use case for, for whatever reason. And I, there are certain clients that, um, that I, I work on that just don't have that ability. They don't have any type of get deployment or on any type of continuous integration like none of these fancy buzzwords uh they're not even buzzwords this is like common practices and more built establishments um that you know when you work on a client that has very little money um and they already have an existing site i, I guarantee you that there's not gonna be a git repository there's not gonna be any type of automatic deployment um there's not gonna be you know any way to deploy from github you know that stuff is gonna be set up you just upload you like they probably only even have like ftp access that's it and so uh you know, like you're you're downloading it making file changes and uploading it like the old traditional way of doing this stuff back in the day um so yeah i still want to have that type of workflow available to me um like i said right now it's just sftp because i want to get the queuing and all this other stuff kind of more fine-tuned and stuff like that and kind of give you the idea of where i'm reaching to is uh php storms and web storms deployment plugin it's, it's for, for any of the editors honestly but like for example when i'm working on a file it'll tell me if it's changed for on the remote section if i need to go quickly edit the remote file i can just like right click deployment edit remote file so i don't need to go hunt for in the remote host which is another feature it has uh, i can do things where i can right click on a folder deployment synchronize it and get a full breakdown of what's what's changed as well as what i will upload or what not upload if i'm going to mark it as deleted like there's a bunch of stuff here and it tells me all these things that i can pull from like i'm not going to download it but i can go ahead and pull this individual change here there's a a lot of features that I, I want to eventually build into this NeoVim SFTP plugin. Um, and once I get like just the bare FTP, SFTP protocol in, then I can go ahead and add an FTP and SFTP and stuff like that. But yeah, that's the idea here uh, is to get that there. It has um, the ability to do rsync. I don't think I'm going to support that anytime soon. Um, and it, it doesn't even work fully here. Like when you set up a project and you exclude folders, it doesn't work with rsync initially. Um, but yeah, it has all that there as a remote browser, like I said, deployment, stuff like that. If I want to do just a quick upload and start clicking around, I can do Apple shift X or windows alt next and stuff like that, uh, and get that option to go ahead and just directly upload it, um, there, but yeah, like the ability to download and merge if the files change. There's just a lot of stuff that I really depend on because if I, if I'm working on just like a common example would be like somebody just threw up some WordPress thing for some client. Um, they work on it intermittently. They don't tell me when they make changes and I go, uh, and make a change off my version that I had from like months ago. I'm going to override the work. Um, and I have clients do that clients, others, programmers do that to me all the time where they just upload my work. So I always want to have, make sure I have a copy, uh, in here. So I, I, you know, I can do get, but other things I can do is just depend on local history sometimes, as long as I'm not changing my major versions of PHP storm or WebStorm or whatever else. Um, but yeah, I eventually want to get this into NeoVim. And the real reason is that I watched a video about sunsetting the Atom editor uh, and its inability to uh, be continued because it was being archived. Like they didn't even want to like consume maybe the community wants to continue it. Even though it's open source, they just going to archive it. <laughs> so they give everyone six months and they're going to archive you know, all of the Atom plugins and everything else for that. So it's not too much of open source because they could technically fork it and whatnot. But for me, I use WebStorm and PeachStorm almost uh, exclusively, and it's, it is my go-to, but it's proprietary software. All this stuff is closed source. If whatever reason JetBrains gets bought out and they have no longer been going to be interested in, in continuing uh, PHP Storm or WebStorm or anything else like that, I'm, I'm screwed. So on top of that, like I can only use this on Windows, Linux, and Mac. Um, 
they recently came out with some ARM versions of those for like Windows and stuff like that. But if you're on like Android, you want to do some type of development on Android or iOS, uh, you're kind of SOL. Uh, the only other true editing options there is something like Vim or NeoVim or um, any other type of terminal editor uh, that you have there from iShell or Termux. So yeah, I, I just wanted to work on a NeoVim plugin here. So, and, and the reason why it has to be NeoVim for now um, is that Vim doesn't have drop control, the, the drop control API that I, I really do need uh, to have available to me. So this is an example of uh, just, you know, editing. And I want to be clear, there are other SFTP plugins. Uh, the primary r issue is that these plugins are one of two things. Uh, they open and close the connection. They don't keep it open or they do not support pushing in a password. Uh, and uh, like I said, I also want to get FTP support in there as well. So with all that said, just to show you kind of like what happens when you first write a file and you just open up the editor. Uh, so I wrote it, it says sending password, attempt it, and it failed. Uh, I can go ahead. Now what this is doing is this is opening up the process, keeping it open, doing password authoriza authorization. If your like fingerprint had changed, there's code to check for that. But if I type in messages, uh, you kind of see like what's going on here. It, sent it queued the command first and it said okay well there's no connection so it tries to set up the connection i need to put a little uh, output for that and then uh it'll go ahead and send the command and this is just like what the upload callback takes in and it says that and then out the it outputs the final thing which is its file to upload and i got to fix that space but yeah that's that's basically what it does and the reason why it fails is because in FSFT, it's very it's a very dumb protocol. It doesn't create folders for you if you go make a uh, file in some other folder that doesn't exist remotely. So I need to do other steps, like I need to run the test command and the, and the make direct directory command before um, I do the upload. So there's like steps I need to do before that for uploading. And uh, if I open up a file here that um, can be uploaded because it's on the root directory, just right here, and just look how quick this can upload. So I'll upload it very quickly. Now this is a local host SFTP, but it's keeping that command open. So it's not having to do the password authorization and resending uh, the connection and stuff like that. And it's not closing it. Um, I can go ahead and do like a, a directory list. If I type in messages again, you can see that this is a directory list here. Now, one thing I'm having an issue because I'm not a NeoVim expert at all. Uh, I don't, I know very little about the API, um, but I, I don't know how to test NeoVim plugins specifically for asynchronous type of stuff. Um, and this is asynchronous. It's just not using any type of like asynchronous API per se that is testable that, I, that I'm, a, I'm aware of. So the only things that I can make tests around right now are kind of the parsing of, of stuff. So for example, um, I have a, uh, a test file here for how I parse the directory listings. So if I was to have all this come back to uh, my batch, can I go ahead and, and you know, kind of get it to go through and get it to parse out to individual like snippets? Like I can actually query is this a file or a folder based off like if this is a D or not. Um, I don't know how standard this stuff is, but this is just off of what I'm going for now. Like I don't, I don't know. I haven't tested for like FT or UTF-8. I haven't tested for um, any other type of errors that might come back through uploading. But just kind of give you an idea, like I have the basics there. It ha it opens up a command. And I kind of give you some idea of like the configuration stuff, max commands or connections, so you can have multiple connections. What it will do is like if you queue up a bunch of files or something that be uploaded, it'll batch it between the different connections based off which ones are like working, quote unquote. Um, you know, you put your host a password, uh, local path doesn't work right now because it just works off of whatever can read from your current working directory of, of your, your Vim session. Um, and then upload on save. You saw that worked. I was, I was just control S or whatever else. Like I can do, um, control S on the configuration. Uh, cause I do have a, a key for that. So same thing, see, it just keeps uploading. Um, and then excludes don't work just yet, but eventually they will. And so you can see that I'm just building out the foundation for now. I want to have a bunch more kind of built into that, uh, based off of what you what I presented from PHP Storm. 
and get that into that uh, as, as a new of MS FTP. I probably want to change this name from new of MS SFTP. I don't know what to name it just yet. Um, maybe uh, NVIM deployment, just like deployment plugin for um, WebStorm or PHP Storm, whatever it's called. Um, yeah, it adds a bit more robustness and then the extra features that come along with uh, that deployment plugin as well. But other than that, that's where I'm at. Now, I do want to talk about some of the pains. Uh, so this, that's, you can stop watching if you don't care anymore. But uh, some of the pain points I ran into in programming this is that um, job control for NeoVim is a little problematic. Let me see if I can open it here. So job start. So in NeoVim, it doesn't send the SCR out line by line. It actually batches it. And the batches is based off an empty return. I wish uh, there's a way to change that so I can just get every individual one and I'm not having to work through different types of batches of, of SCR out coming through. And the reason why is because then when I want to consider what something's done, like it's not always, I don't know, maybe this did that just to make it easier for developers. But for me, it's, it causes a problem. So um, yeah, there's a job start. And then a weird thing I was running into was I couldn't, I wasn't getting in feedback from the FCP server to tell me to put in my password. And I was like, why is this not working? So I, just, I literally was going through every single command and trying it to see if it was going to fix it. And I, so I had to type in help in a job start. Um, and it gives you kind of like the breakdown of it um, and the explanation of all these different things. So yeah, I mean, it's not that great. I gotta go through this and to be clear this wasn't even the first time I, I was trying to do this i was going working through the planar plugin which is a way to kind of give you a bunch of lua functionality and they have a planar job which is exactly what this is i'm very confused about why that exists when this seems to be a better option but yeah i mean you you place it and the issue i was running into was trying to get it to run asynchronous as well as yielding back feedback uh, when I was doing like a, an upload or something like that, that can continuously read it in and yield back and stuff like that. So it didn't support coroutines. Um, with this solution, I don't need coroutines at all, but I, I literally forked it. Um, so I went to depths, uh, lib, no, bin. Where did I put this? Okay, let me, let me double check this here. So go to the top, um, depths, inspect, nope. Depths job. Where's job? Oh, yeah. So I literally had to fork this and then I added in coroutine. Uh, I'm not going to go to the code, but basically I had to add in coroutine co support. So when you yield, and then I ran into another issue with that, which is um, this is like Lua 5.1 support, and that didn't support yielding with parameters. So I had to put in like a buffer of parameters to be yielded that I would read. It was like this stupid <laughs> workarounds after another workaround. And then I finally was just like, why there's gotta be like another way. You're like, why like this plugin exists for a reason. And then I found out job control. So this is why it's currently NeoVim only because job control is that. Now, like I said, the, the issue with that is that when I go to parse SCR out, I actually need to push it into my own SCR out line by line. Um, and that's just so I can have a buffer set. So when a command is done, so in SFTP, it tells you the command is done by sending out, um, I'll show you here, this command. So when you read this line, then you know SFTP is ready to accept another command from you. So it'll throw back everything else. But in the interim, it could throw blank lines, which I'll get repeated feedback coming in uh, of multiple SCR outs, batches of, of lines, uh, that aren't ready, that aren't really like quote unquote done. So I have to check for the, you know, the last item of, of the SCR out, make sure it reads up this. And then I'm, and once I get that, then it's like, okay, it's ready. I look to see if there's a callback. If there is a callback, I'll go ahead and call it. So like when I do a, uh, a listing, uh, you know, I send my command. So this is like the raw SFTP command. And then here's my callback for that. Um, and then I can go ahead and do what I need here, which is actually parse the local files. You know, if the file's not null, then go ahead and 
you know, I just echo it out to that messages section there. So, you know, pretty straightforward. It was just trying to work through that stuff. Um, if Vim has job control support, uh, then yeah, this stuff can be used. But at the time being, I think it's this NeoVim limited only. So unfortunately, this will be a NeoVim only type of plugin. Um, I was looking at potentially doing some AngSeq stuff here. So you can you can do like an uh, async and await um, with uh, planar async stuff. But I just wanted to keep it simple enough for now because there aren't going to be a lot of callbacks per se, potentially for um, SFTP upload because I do need to do multiple queues um, for this. And then just the kind of the last bit of here was queuing all this stuff up. This is very basic too. You set up a loop timer um, and you just you say, you know, start immediately, which is zero. And then every 100 milliseconds, go ahead and look for something to do. Uh, so this, this goes to calls this here, which just gets an available connection. Uh, if there's not, it doesn't try to actually process any kind of commands just yet. So if it's trying to initialize and put in the password, uh, it, you know, it tries to do that. And, and the, um, lookup for this actually looks to see if it's working, which is basically like, Hey, I'm trying to process the command. I'm not ready to accept anything just yet because I'm still getting feedback from the from the FC, SFTP server. Oh, shoot. Okay, didn't mean to go all the way back there. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, I just take the item out out of queue immediately. I, I know this is asynchronous; it's not parallel, so technically, it's not possible for it to process multiple item multiple requests at the single at the same time. But it's it, just in case, you know. And then I send. Instead of it being queued, I go ahead and actually send the raw command with the connection that's available to be used uh, through that send command there. So that's just what all this just does. Just write it and stuff like that. Very basic. But um, yeah, I mean, that's it. I know it's kind of a long video, but just kind of like my hopes for this. I have a bunch of other projects I'm working on too that uh, I, I know will eventually come to bite me, but this one is is really important for me um and i know it'll be very helpful to the community that uses new um those that do a little bit more traditional type of development work or just you know for a reason can't have a local development server on their own computer they definitely do need to upload at a frequent rate and waiting you know 10 seconds is a bit much when connections are constantly being dropped and reopened <laughs>